Hi everyone, this is the final location now. We have just left Rebel Base over at uh, Jim Sajo and we're over at Fashion Walk at Causeway Bay. It is the last of the Hot Toys stores we're going to now. Just like the other place we're at, they had a lot of luxury brands. So hopefully we'll see some nice figures. Hopefully, hopefully so. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel. And another massive thank you goes out to both Budget Stark and Ryan Kirkwood for helping me film these Hot Toys store tour videos. It has been so much fun. Seeing these stores in person, it doesn't compare to seeing the pics online. So if you can, get your butt on a plane to Hong Kong and go and see these stores in person. If you're a Hot Toys collector, you are going to have a whale of a time. Also stay tuned to the end of the video because Budget Stark, he has a segment planned that is very special indeed. But this store, it's in Fashion Walk, a much more touristy area compared to Secret Base, so rent is high. So that means this store is another functional store like Rebel Base. You can actually buy figures here. On the outside of the store, we have a bunch of displays showcasing some prototypes and also some released figures as well. We do have the new Shuri Black Panther looking fantastic. I love the proportions here and that big honking weapon. Then we have the special edition Spidey. I'm pretty sure this one is called the Web of Spider-Man versus the D23 version, aka Churo Spidey. Next up, we have Jesse, who at the time of filming this video wasn't released, but now he is. So there's that. It's kind of crazy to me that there is so much Star Wars on the outside of the store, because in Hong Kong, Star Wars isn't super popular. I don't think it's a massive draw the same way as it would be in Western markets. But yeah, there's Crosshair, and he looks pretty cool too. Then on the inside of the store, more Star Wars. This time, it's the new DX Darth Vader. Now, this is the one with the more Imperial-style flooring base, and they didn't have any of the accessories on display. He wasn't lit up, his saber wasn't lit up, and his battle damage head sculpt wasn't on display either. But that Purge Trooper from Kenobi in the back? Oh, I'm all for that guy. I love the pops of red. To the immediate left of Darth Vader and the Purge Trooper, a huge avatar display. And when I say huge... I'm not exaggerating, this display is gigantic. If you ask me, Justin, what's the size and scale of these Banshees? I wouldn't be able to tell you, they were literally enormous. I don't know how anyone would potentially fit these in the display, and those Na'vi figures, they're already big enough, so trying to accommodate the Banshees as well, yeah, I don't think that's gonna happen, at least not for me, at least not in my lifetime, but... Who knows, if you can fit them, maybe Hot Toys will eventually make them. Now, this store is a lot smaller, they have significantly less figures on display, but to try and combat the limited space, they have done something rather clever, and you will see what I mean in just a second. On the right side of the store, though, there are so many Cos Babies. You've got blind boxes, you've got deluxe sets, you've got the Cos Riders, you've got big ones, you've got small ones, so... If you're a Cosbaby fan or a Lightbox fan, look at this freaking wall. There are so many options to choose from. I do really like that Venom Lightbox. I'm tempted to get that for my own collection. We also have screens on the ceiling, some crazy artwork up there, and in the center of the store, this masterpiece. Like I just said, there's a limited amount of space here, so they had to get really clever, and that they did. Instead of having multiple smaller displays, they've got this massive Iron Man display, and it's rotating permanently. So all you need to do is stand in one spot, and the display comes to you, plus the poses are on point. I mean, they need to be, because if they weren't and this thing was rotating, the poses would lock off at certain angles, but... They really don't, from pretty much every angle, all of those poses are straight fire. I also really dig that Echo Base Neon Light. I would love to have that in my display as well. No, I don't have room for it, but still, a collector can only dream. Now, this thing? Still not sure how I feel about it. Honestly, in my figure preview video, I called it the Open Sandwich Mark 7, because it's kind of what it is. It's the front part of the Mark 7, but the back is entirely open. It's spread apart, all the panels are open, and there are some LEDs on the inside. Am I excited to get this? No, not really, but who knows? That could potentially change when it releases. We will have to wait and see. Now, this wall with the awesome Spider-Man artwork, it has a ton of figures that you can actually buy. You've got that weird 
Venom artist mix thing, you've got Venomized Iron Man, you've got a ton of diecast figures, and you've got the exclusive web of Spider-Man Spidey as well. Sans Churro. Unfortunately, no Churro is included with that one. Now we had an Iron Man rotating display. Next up, they did the same thing for Captain America. All of the Hot Toys Captain America figures throughout the years posed up together, and it's pretty much an anthology display. I love seeing these timeline displays. It tells a story and it shows the evolution of a character. Not to mention the evolution of Hot Toys figures, because you can see some of the earlier ones here, and compared to the newer ones, proportions, sculpt, paint applications, they're significantly better. So it not only tells the Cap story, but it tells the story of Hot Toys as well. If only I had the space, once again, I would love to do a rotating display like this. We also have a massive wall of apparel and umbrellas and mugs and cushions and more cos babies and also some Star Wars figures tucked up in the corner, but like I said, Star Wars, not super popular in Hong Kong and that's why you're not seeing a ton for sale at Echo Base here. Cos babies though, plenty. Not gonna lie, this is a pretty sick looking way of displaying Cos Babies. The various racks, Cos Baby in the middle, and also a mix of lines. You've got Winnie the Pooh, you've got X-Men, you've got Avengers, you've got Captain Marvel, and you had some DC down the bottom. That ain't it for 1-6 scale figures though, and that ain't it for the rotating displays either. We've got two more, the first of which is Infinity War. Now they have snuck in the Civil War version of Falcon, but... I did that too in my display, so I'm guilty of doing that because they never made a Falcon for Infinity War, so seeing as though his outfit is identical, you may as well pop them in, which is exactly what they did. And having this rotate with the wings fanned out, super impressive. The poses, on point here. And don't forget, these are Hot Toys' own figures, so they don't have to care about creasing or damage. But if you also don't care about creasing or damage, feel free to pause the video and copy a pose or two. Back to Cos Babies. See what I've done? I've padded out the 1-6 scale stuff with Cos Babies, just so you never know what you're going to see next. Try and keep you on your toes a little. There also are some light boxes up the top, and these are a great way of adding a punch of colour to the display. Speaking of displays, back to the rotating ones. The last rotating display in the store. It's a mix of Age of Ultron, and Infinity War, and Civil War as well, especially for that Wanda. Plus Ant-Man and the Wasp, although that Ant-Man, he's got a pretty interesting display base because there's an Avengers logo on it, and I've never seen that display base for Ant-Man before. So maybe he was a prototype, or some kind of special edition. Either way, he's right at home here. He definitely deserves to be displayed along with the other Avengers. Now, the store itself on the outside is very eye-catching. Quantumania artwork, we've got some screens, and some neon lighting as well. But... That's about it for Echo Base. I promised you a special budget Stark segment, and surprise, it's a world exclusive budget Stark collection tour. Hi everyone, this is my collection, and Justin has a world exclusive. No one else, no other collector has actually seen my collection, and here it is. Let's start with the top right over here. Many people have asked me before about these holographics at the back. They're actually all custom pieces made in Hong Kong. Um, you see a lot of variants there, some Mark IV variants, Mark VII variants, Sub-Zero, Chocolate Edition, another holographic, and now you come to the more standard Iron Man, Mark uh, Iron Man III. As some people may have noticed, my only non-Iron Man related figure, which is Black Panther, a couple of synthetics, and the blue uh, Stealth. Then if you move across, you have all these at the back here are standard Iron Man Mark III series. And I think some of you can appreciate it's getting rather, rather clustered and crowded here. So if you guys can come up with any ideas what I can do um, to make this a little bit easier to follow and see. Because if you can see at the back here, if we go down to the middle shelf, I can't quite see my figures at the back. Even though they're all lit up, I can't really appreciate what I have here. At the back is a custom one of one battle damaged Mark V plastic edition. And there are actually some figures here I really like, but I can't see it so well. The neon text on the left moving across to my War Machine collection, which also spans across to these custom LED modified pieces. You have the Iron Patriots and the Rescue. These were done by LED Light Toys. 
and at the back here, the nano blasters from a third party which have been affixed to the wall. I've just spotted one other custom war machine at the back, military green. I'm not sure if you can get in there. But that's something that's been with me for many years, almost 10 years. And if we pan down, you have a modified whiplash moving across to these figures, which are quarter scale size, and a custom battle damaged Hulkbuster 2.0. How have I lit these up? I've used about 14 or 16 Soap Studio reactors. You can see one at the back there. And these are all connected to one power plug. So I can switch all my light up features on with one button, as you saw earlier on. And this is my display currently with about another six figures to go in, including pre-orders not released yet. So that is pretty much my collection. So now you viewers have the chance to see it right here on Justin's collection. Well, ladies and gents, I do want to say a massive thank you to Budget for taking us around the town, showing us the sites, the stores. I didn't think we were going to be able to film, but turns out we got a lot of footage. Yeah, I wonder how we managed to get that done. And we showed you hopefully everything that you wanted to see. If you are planning a trip to Hong Kong, now you know which stores that might interest you. There is a lot of hot toys for sale outside of Secret Base. At Secret Base, not so much. That is true. That mm. is very true. Um, I think it was fun. It was something different. You haven't been to Hong Kong for many years now. And yeah. I think it was definitely a good time to come. Uh, there wasn't so many people. And the fact that you could actually pick up figures right there at Echo Base, yes. uh, Rebel Base. I really enjoyed it, seeing everyone again. Interacting with the collectors more now that people can come into Hong Kong and we can leave. Yep. Um, I think on that note, we can say thank you all for watching and catch you all at the next video. Mm -hmm.